Hi everybody. I've been busy working away on my modular rigging tool and I thought it was about time to share an update. I won't be going over the basics again in this video, so if you're new to this tool, please watch the first, which is linked below. This explains the idea behind this tool and what I'm trying to achieve, which essentially is a no fuss, easy to use tool, which allows you to rig anything quickly and easily. Or in short, an animation toolkit created by an animator for animators. So each rig is based on a blueprint and you define that blueprint by building it out of modules. So be this an arm module, a spine module, a head module, a tail module, could be anything you want. And this then allows you to build any rig you like. So since the last video, I've been focusing mainly on adding IK functionality into the modules. Let's create a basic root node and attach an arm module onto that. So let's set the fingers to two and this will give it a finger and a thumb. Straight away, the module is looking different from the previous version. If I switch this back to an FK module, the controls we don't need vanish. They come back if I switch to IK and FK. And you can see we also have the ability to dictate where our pole vector controls go. There are even some pole vector controls for the fingers too. I can also choose to use spline IK on this module too if I wanted. And as you can see, we don't need pole vectors for that type of module, so they're hidden again. In addition to IK, I also added squash and stretch into the modules too, but we will look at that later, so let's just disable it for now. Okay, let's generate an FK rig. And there we have basic FK controls. But what if we changed our minds and wanted to add IK too? We can simply go back and edit the blueprint. And then regenerate the rig. So now we have an IK arm with IK fingers as well. And we haven't lost FK either. We have the ability to blend back to that at any point. Let's go back to the blueprint again and select the spline IK option. And now we have spline IK driving the arm. Now some of these options might not fit that particular module, but they are there if you need them. And you can quickly generate a different rig if needed. Now you'll notice at the moment, when we want to go back and edit the blueprint, we lose the skeleton. Now in the future, I'm planning on adding in the option to allow you to keep the skeleton too. So if you've skinned a model and painted the weights, you can simply remove the rig and generate a new one, all while keeping the model and weight information. Okay, let's get back on track. Let's add squash and stretch back into the rigs now and generate a basic IK arm. With any of these other options, so IK or Spline IK, you always have FK2. It's just added on top, so you'll always be able to blend between the two. So FK and IK, or FK and Spline IK. And there we have a stretchy arm. Plus stretchy fingers too. Actually, those IK controls are a bit small, so let's step back and update them. And you can do this with any control. That's better. You see, you can now choose a control style for both FK and IK controls. So the rig is fully configurable through the blueprint. Let's generate that. And there, those are much easier to select now. Just ignore those black locators, they should be hidden. The finger IK controls follow the wrist, but we have space swapping on them, so we can change them to be in world space instead. And space swapping options are added automatically onto a lot of these elements and a lot of the blueprint parts. 
There's the option to adjust how stretchy that part of the blueprint is. And you can choose how it stretches. So it can stretch but not squash, squash but not stretch, and also do both. I also added in the option to globally enable or disable squash and stretch, just in case. Now depending on the engine you're using, you may not be able to use squash and stretch. So this way you can quickly disable it and then your animators don't accidentally use it. So that's now disabled on the whole rig. So as well as being able to define your own blueprints, I'm including some pre-made ones too, for some of the more common rigs. And we did take a quick look at these in the previous video. As you can see, these look different to the earlier versions too, mainly due to the addition of IK. So as mentioned, you can choose what control shapes you want for IK and FK, or do it globally on the main module control. So the idea with these pre-made blueprints is you can quickly load them, move the locators to better fit your models, adjust the controls, and then you can generate your rig. So let's generate this rig now. And by default, the limbs have IK plus are stretchy and the spine uses spline IK. They all also have the option of FK2. Looking at this now, the spine IK controls are too small and would likely be hidden by the model. So let's update them. As mentioned, we can change these independently, but let's do them all on the module control. So let's change them to the lollipop shape. So the control sticks out of the back. and rotate them, and we can make them bigger too. We could, if we wanted, edit the position of the CVs too, but we will leave this basic shape for now. Actually, let's change the IK control at the end of the arm too, so it's a bit more recognizable. Maybe a cube, and let's scale and reposition this. Don't worry about moving controls away from the rig, when the rig is generated, the pivot for each control will be snapped back to the joints. So let's generate that rig. And all those controls have been updated now. Pull vector controls also have space swapping too, so we could stop it following the hand. and instead let's have it following the root control. As mentioned earlier and in the previous video, the idea with this tool is to have all the configuration options on the blueprint, so you don't need to update or change the rig once it's been generated, hopefully saving you lots of time. Let's look at another blueprint now. How about the K9? And again, each module has the same options. So the tail is currently set to be FK. Let's change it to IK so the tip can be pinned. Maybe the tail is trapped in a door in the animation or something. The tip control is a little small, so let's quickly change that. The spine is spline IK, which is fine. So let's generate this now. And we have a quadruped rig. And look, we have IK on the tail too. If we test the spine controls, you see everything moves as it should. As you can see, this also has squash and stretch added too to make it a bit more flexible. Actually looking at it, the spine controls, just like with the biped before, are a bit small, so let's change them. Let's use circles instead here, and adjust the shape.
Okay, those are better. Let's look at the spider next. And this has IK on the legs too. And in this version, I've also added an octopus blueprint. This is mainly so I can work on the different limb types. Plus, this will be a good test when I start adding in the ribbon-based rigs. So at the moment, the tentacles are basic FK limbs. We can just update the first to be spline IK for more flexibility. And let's make the tip control bigger before we generate the rig. So this tentacle is still FK, but this is being driven by spline IK. Okay, so that's just a quick update on where I am with this new tool. And if you join my YouTube channel, you can download this now and play around with it, or even use it on your projects. It's still in very early development though, so there will be bugs and features missing, but it would be good to get your feedback. And also, the added support will mean that I can dedicate more time to working on this tool and getting it finished and to you sooner. So what's next? Well, I need to add in support for twist and roll joints. I also need to add in the foot rigs for a human, canine and bird too. And then there's the face rig. I also want to add in rigs for other things like vehicles, wheels, pistons, anything like that. So I'm just trying to think of things that you may want to rig that I can create a module for, which will just speed up the process for you. And it doesn't stop there though, as I also want to build on top of this a higher end rig probably ribbon based, which can be used in production. Once that's done, I then want to create a suite of animation tools to help anyone who animates with these rigs. So as you can see, there's still lots to do. Well, thanks for taking the time to watch this video and stay right to the end. While you're here, why not check out some of the other videos and courses I have available. If you have any questions, please post them in the Ant CGI community Discord server. That's the best place to reach me, and if I'm not around, there are plenty of other talented people available to help. Remember to help support future content, like tools like this, and keep my videos and courses free, hit the thanks button below, visit the Ant CGI store, or even better, join the Ant CGI club. You can also treat me to a coffee at my coffee page just to say thank you. The link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, this is AntCGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.